how much baking soda and how much vinegar do I need to add to this Ziploc bag so that when I mix them together, they completely inflate the bag without overflowing it. Like that. Obviously, we need a little bit less. Let's try out the calculations. We're gonna do some gas stoichiometry. All right, so this is a fairly simple activity I do with my grade 11 chemistry class. And if you wanna try it at home, uh, you only need some basic equipment and you can follow along with the handout that I use which you can download for free in the description below. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how much volume is in our Ziploc bag. Now everyone might be using a different Ziploc bag online so one way you can do it is to figure out the mass of the Ziploc bag and then the mass of the water with the Ziploc bag um, if you have a kitchen scale and knowing the density of water, you can figure out the volume of the Ziploc bag. If you have a graduated cylinder or something else in your kitchen that will help you measure volume, uh, you can fill it up that way and add into your Ziploc bag. <laughs> um, so I had someone help me do that, and it turns out it's about 800 milliliters or 0 0.8 liters. So now that we know that, let's go do our calculations. All right, so here's our reaction. We have baking soda and acetic acid, or vinegar, mixed together to give us sodium acetate, water, and carbon dioxide gas. Now this is what we're interested in actually filling up the Ziploc bag with. And that Ziploc bag has a volume of 0 0.8 liters, which means we need to produce a volume of 0 0.8 liters of carbon dioxide gas. Now what I need to know is exactly how much mass of baking soda will I need to produce that much carbon dioxide gas. So let's solve this problem. So first what I need to know is to figure out how many moles of carbon dioxide gas will I need. So step one, figure out how many moles we're going to use PIVNORT or PV equals NRT. Now in the room, we're going to just use the pressure of 100 kilopascals. The volume will be 0 0.8 liters. Uh, we know our gas constant as 8.31 kilopascals liters per Kelvin mole. And then our temperature in the room when we did this experiment was about 21 degrees Celsius or simply add 273 to figure out what uh, amount of Kelvin it is, which turns out to be 294 Kelvin. So all we need to do is rearrange this equation for moles. So N will then be equal to PV over RT. So let's substitute all we know. So 100 kilopascals for pressure, 0 0.8 liters for volume. Our gas constant is 8.31 kilopascals liter per mole Kelvin, all times by our temperature, which is 294 Kelvin. When we do that, we get 0 0.0327 moles of carbon dioxide. Now, step two would be to do a mole ratio, but in this case, our equation is already balanced, and so all the mole, mole ratios are just ones. So since we know that there is uh, 0 0.027 moles of carbon dioxide, we also know the number of moles of baking soda, 0 0.0327 moles. Now there is another way you could have done this you could have figured out the number of moles without using PV equals NRT, but you could have just used the number of moles is equal to the volume of our carbon dioxide gas over the molar volume at standard atmospheric temperature and pressure. Now this is for 100 kilopascals and 25 degrees. Now our temperature is 21 degrees, so it will be a little bit off but if you use 
um, the molar volume Vm at SATP to be 24.8 liters per mole, you will get N to be equal to 0 0.0323 moles. So very close and a lot quicker. Then we do the same mole ratio. So N is equal to 0 0.0323 moles. Now there's a little bit of error in that one because in our room, the temperature was only 21 degrees, not 25 degrees. But let's go ahead and use this value since our experiment is more of a fun one to fill a bag of gas. So step three, knowing the number of moles of sodium bicarbonate, we can figure out the mass of that sodium bicarbonate by taking the number of moles times the molar mass. So to figure out the molar mass, you look at your periodic table and you have to add the molar masses of sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and three oxygen. So when you do that, well, we have 0 0.0323 moles of sodium bicarbonate multiplied by its molar mass, which will be 84.02 grams per mole, which gives us a mass of 2.714 grams. So we are going to need to weigh something as close to this as possible. Now, what we also need to do is we need to mix in vinegar. Now vinegar we can put in excess. So we're going to put vinegar in excess, but we need to figure out what the minimum amount is that we're going to need. So since it's still all a one-to-one -one concentration, we know, let's do this step four, we know that the number of moles of vinegar or acetic acid is also going to be 0 0.0323 moles. So if we know the number of moles, we can use our equation where concentration equals moles per volume. And we know the concentration of vinegar. That's on the worksheet. If you want to see that worksheet, it's available for free to download in the description. Our concentration is 0 0.87 moles per liter of acetic acid. So rearranging this equation, we will get volume equal to moles divided by concentration. Let's continue over here. So that's going to give us moles of 0 0.0323 moles divided by the concentration of 0 0.87 moles per liter. And we get 0 0.0371 liters or 37.1 milliliters of vinegar. So we need more than that. So let's round up to say 40, 45, or even 50 milliliters will be safe. Okay, so we need 2.714 grams of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. So I'm going to take my scale here, put on a beaker, and then I'm going to re-zero. And then we need 2.7. So that's 1.5. Three point four is too much, so we need to get rid of some of that. Two point seven two zero. That's close enough. All right, so we have our baking soda. And we also calculated we need thirty seven milliliters of vinegar. Now vinegar I want to be in excess, so let me just add a bit more and we'll make it forty milliliters. Now we're going to add them into the corners without them touching. So let's lift up the corners like this. Add the baking soda on one side. Add the vinegar on the other side. Seal them, pushing out any gas that might already be in there and mix them together.
keep mixing, you want all your baking soda to react. There's going to be a little excess vinegar. As long as we can get all the baking soda to react, we're good. And there is our bag of gas that didn't explode this time. 